Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, welcome and thank God that you took out the time of your busy schedule to tune in to Sharp Points tonight. This is a program on each and every Thursday night that can be watched here on Facebook Live, taken from Proverbs 27 and verse number 17 that declares iron sharpeneth iron so that the man sharpen it the counsel of his friends and the word sharpen it it comes from the Hebrew word kadad which really has to deal with to be made alert or to be made keen so when you and I hear this program it is to alert you it is to cause you to be better cause you to be more thereby causing you to have more I believe that we sharpen each other. We cause each other to be more keen, to be more alert as you begin to share your wealth of knowledge and I begin to share mine. So we thank God for you tuning in tonight. I want you to move quickly. We only have 30 minutes each and every Thursday night. So I want you to move quickly. Get on that phone, text somebody, call somebody, email them if you have to and let them know that Sharp Points is on the air. What did I say? Text somebody, call somebody, email them. Come on phone tree. Let's do our duties. Those of you that are part of Newness of Life Christian Center, a shout out to every member of Newness of Life Christian Center on behalf of my lovely wife, Reese and I, we say to you, amen, expect the great. Amen. And so we're believing that God's going to indeed think through my mind and speak through my lips tonight. And great things are going to happen. Shout out to my man, Vincent Bellamy, on tonight. Hallelujah. On behalf of my lovely wife, Reese and I, we saw you up there the other night talking. Amen. On uh, the Facebook, uh, the duo. Amen. With your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Shout out to her as well. Amen. So we appreciate that shout out you gave us. Amen. Brother Vincent, we love you, man. And of all days, that was the day when my wife left her phone and forgot her phone. So we missed it. But we went back and we saw it and we appreciate you, man. Stay strong. Keep your head up. Keep looking unto Jesus because he is indeed the author and the finisher of your faith. In fact, I want to send a special shout out to all the men in advance because we know that this upcoming Sunday is Father's Day. And we're celebrating men. We celebrated you ladies. Come on. We celebrated you ladies. And of course, amen, we talked to you ladies about our women's book called Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. And we also talked to you about Natasha Aline's book entitled Having the Dexterity, the Tenacity, and the Audacity to Be Successful, A Guide to Fulfilling Your Purpose. We talked about all of these books, amen, during the time, amen, of Women's Day. And of course, we just got a new one that uh, that can bless you ladies. It's written by Dr. Savelle Smith who used to be, amen, a part of our church, but she moved. Of course, she was lived, driving back and forth to, to Durham, taking that drive each and every Sunday many years ago from Durham. And we ministered her about God blessing her with a house and God did all that. But she also has a book out and it's called Ladies, You Were Intended to Be the Prize. And y'all know I believe that and I've been speaking that, talking to y'all about that, amen, all this time, that you are the prize. He that findeth a wife, find a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. You are that prize, amen. So uh, you can call her and get a copy of her book. Uh, contact her at 919-672-9819. 919-672-9819. Nine eight one nine. All right. And Dr. Savea, she's a native of Durham. She's a, a owner of Doc Smith Realty. She has a real estate, her own real estate license, real estate company. Amen. And she's a you win life coach. Amen. And she has her own publishing company. She did, does her own publishing. We'll be talking about some other things that she has written that, that I'm reading a book now about. Amen. How about, uh, being lemon, turning some stuff into lemonade. At any rate, but men, I got a word for you in this book called I Am My Brother's Keeper. 
empowering men to take their place. And since this Sunday is Father's Day, I'm challenging all men. Bring your brothers, bring your uncles, bring your uh, male friends. And come on, let's pack the house of God out with some men. Let's invite husbands, sons, uncles, amen, as well as nephews, cousins. Let's get the men. Come on, men. Amen. Let's show up. In the Old Testament, there were three times a year in which God would challenge men to show up before him. Let me say it again. Three times a year in the Old Testament, God demanded to talk to men and the women would be left at home and the children would be left at home. But the men would be there to represent the wife, to represent the child, because I'm telling you, when we get men in line, our nation, our streets, our churches and neighborhoods will begin to line up because men have an important role in what God is doing in the earth or in what the devil does in the earth. I'm telling you, when that man messed up, it took another man to get it right. Did you hear what I just said? When the first Adam, which was the male, messed up, it messed up everything. But thank God for the last Adam. Jesus Christ, who corrected, who made us able or caused us to be able now to walk in dominion all over again, because the first man was created for dominion. He was created to subdue the earth. He was created to be have rule over the fish and over the fowls of the air and the birds and the fish life. Amen. As well as the animal kingdom. God created man for rulership and dominion. But now we reign in life as kings through Jesus Christ. So God gave us dominion back through his son, Jesus Christ. By one man's disobedience, amen, we were made sinners. But by one man's obedience, we have been made righteous. Wow. Thank God for Jesus. Well, let's get ready to pray and go into the word for tonight. Father, we thank you for the richness, the vastness, the broadness of your word. Great peace have they which love thy law. And Father, we love your word. We honor your word because you have exalted your word above your name. And we thank you for it. And we believe tonight you would think through my mind and speak through my lips a relevant word in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Don't forget we're here each and every Tuesday night Bible study at 730 and we are doing a powerful teaching in Bible study and each and every Thursday night Facebook live and each and every Sunday morning. We're back in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. But we're right here on the Facebook platform and the YouTube platform at 1030 simultaneously pumping out the word of God to you. Well, let's get our Bibles and we're going to talk to you tonight. Amen. Because on last Thursday, we started talking to you out of Psalm 78 and we talked about taking the limits off God and how that they limited the Holy One of Israel. And tonight we're going to talk to you and begin a teaching series each and every Thursday right here. We're going to talk to you off a subject, a new me for my new day. What did I just say? A new me for my new day. Now, this is part one of it. I won't be able to no way in no wise finish all the revelation that God has given me to help you. Amen. As we're talking about a new me for my new day. Because when we study the word of God, God brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt through and by the blood of the lamb. We know that God told them to take a lamb for every house, anoint the post with blood. And as a result of the blood, the deaf angel passed over the nation of Israel houses. But the firstborn of all the Egyptians were killed. 
and they were brought out and delivered through the Red Sea, a, pat, uh, a type and a picture and a shadow of being baptized. And of course, they were moving from Egypt through the wilderness into the promised land. But again, they doubted what God said, start asking the question, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Amen. And all of these doubtful questions and they limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remain steadfast in the covenant. What were they doing? They were acting like the old person when God was bringing them into a new day. Let me say it again. They were acting like an old person when God had brought them into a new day. God wanted them to be a new person in the new day that he had created for them. And even so, God wants us to be a new person in the new day that he has established for us. Let's look at it in the word. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 17 through 20. Listen at this. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 17 through 20 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ or be in the anointed one, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Notice what he said. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. So we see that once we are in Christ, we are new and we don't need to be trying to take old into new, but rather understand that God made you a new person, a brand new being, not a renovated being, but a new creature. You have to see yourself and acknowledge that you are a new person. And God wants you to be this new person in this new day that he has established for you and I. All right, let's look at it in the Message Bible. The Message Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20 says, Now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah or Christ gets a fresh start, is created New, the old life is gone. Could grace somebody. The old life is gone. A new life emerges. Look at it. All this comes from God, from the God who settled the relationship ship between us and him and then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. Wow. That's good stuff. Amen. That God is telling us, I'm giving you a fresh start. I want you to understand that you are new now. You're not the, see the nation Israel never saw themselves as new. Therefore, they wanted those same habits and that same lifestyle that they saw practiced by the Egyptians rather than stepping out of the old and being that new person. Hallelujah. For the new day that God was creating for them. And who am I talking to tonight who needs to understand 
that you are a new person and you need to be the new you in this new day. Don't be the old person and expecting a new day, but rather be this new person in the new day in which God has created for you. Hallelujah. Listen, it's been said, it's been said, write this quote down. It's been said, today is a new day and I choose to be new in it. Get that. Today is a new day. Hallelujah. And I'm choosing to be new in it. Paul was a new person who understood that he was living in a new day. That's why he said, those things which were gained to me, I count them but laws or dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. He said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, and I reach for the things which are before me. In other words, Paul, who was circumcised on the eighth day, was of the tribe of Benjamin, was a, a, a Jewish scholar, one who was a, a great man as it relate to the Jewish religion. He had to let go of all of that and begin to understand that he was not saved by the law of Moses, but he was saved by grace through faith. And he had to begin to understand that now he was reaching for this newness that God had for him. Hallelujah. And I'm talking to somebody who needs to understand that every day God gives us new mercy for the new day that he's creating for us. So don't try to take the old you in this new day in which God has created for you. Tomorrow is going to be a what? Brand new day. Are you going to choose to be new in the new day or are you going to be old in the new day? God wants you to be a new you in the new day. That's what we're talking about. It's been said, watch this. The past is a place of reference, not a place of residence. <laughs> The past is a place of reference, not a place of residence, not somewhere you reside. The past is a place of learning, not a place of living. You get that? In other words, you're not going to live in the past. You're going to learn from the past. You're not going to reside in the past. You're going to step into your new day. It's a new season. Y'all know that song. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing coming my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. Hallelujah. It's a new season coming to me. Hallelujah. Well, if you believe it's a new day, you got to understand that God wants you to operate as a new being, as a new person. Now, let's get into this. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 in the New Century Version. I'm going to look at this in several other translations so you can get a hold of this revelation. And then we're going to give you about seven things that it takes for you to be this new you in the new day. All right. It says, if anyone belongs to Christ, there is a new creation. The old things have gone Everything is made new. Come on. Hallelujah. Notice the name of our church. It's called newness of life. We're not trying to walk as an old person, as the old self. We have allowed the old thing and the old person to die so that the new person can come alive. It's a new you in the new day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So expect fresh stuff. Expect fresh things to come your way. God ain't trying to do like he did yesterday. Some people trying to go back to what was. Now, listen, there's been a pandemic and everything else. I believe in women conference and men conference and all that stuff. But I believe that God is trying to awaken us to something bigger than that. I believe that God is trying to awaken us 
to evangelism. God trying to awaken us. And we're going to be talking a lot about evangelism in the days and months to come because God is trying to awaken us to not just a man stir each other up as Christians, but be about the harvest. Bring people into their new day, into their new season, into their new life. Thank God. Hallelujah. I would have been lost and went to hell if the church had only been thinking about the church. I was lost. I was out there smoking dope, drinking wine. Amen. Running foolishly. But thank God that my sister had a spirit of evangelism on her where she prayed for me, fasted for me and wanted God to touch my life and my brother as well as my mother. When I got saved, I was thinking about one thing. How can I help my brother? How can I help, amen, old girlfriends and help guys that I ran with get saved? Hallelujah, because I have been brought into my new day. And when you're brought into your new day, you want others to be brought into their new day. A new you for your new day. That's what we're talking about. Let me look at it in the new century version in the I mean, I'm sorry, in the uh, new living translation. Look at it in the new living translation. It says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life, not an old life. A new life has begun. Hallelujah. Now think about it. When you have been brought into a new life, you should expect new things to come along with it. Come on. How, you know what I'm talking about. When you get your new house, amen, most of the time you take just a few things that look almost brand new into your new house. And then what you start doing, basically buying new stuff to go with your new house. Come on. Why? Because you got newness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Amen. When my wife and I, we bought a new car. We didn't take nothing old into that new car, try to put in that new car because it'll take away from the newness. Hallelujah. See, anger, wrath, bitterness, strife, jealousy, hatred. It takes away from the new person you are and the new person you're called to be. This new person should walk in love, walk in peace, walk in long suffering, walk in gentleness, walk in, hallelujah, the anointing. Because why? You a new person for your new day. Glory to God. Let me read this in the Amplified Classic. It says, therefore, if any person is in, engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new, cre new creation, a new creature altogether. Nothing old about you now. You're new altogether. The old, previous, moral, and spiritual condition has passed away. You're not a, a listen at this. You're not a sinner saved by grace. You're a child of God saved by grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're not a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. Hallelujah. You're not coming up the rough side of the mountain. No, no, no. You are a new creation with new heights and new horizons to tap into. God brought you out from the old and you're new altogether. Everything about you has been revolutionized, has been changed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Behold, watch what it says. This is Amplified Classic. The old previous moral spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. What has come? The fresh and new. Are you hearing me? Nothing is worse than stale bread. Nothing is worse, worse than the Christian trying to live an old stale life when God has called us to embrace the new. God has called us to lay hold of the fresh. Hallelujah. God has called us to lay hold of the newness that he wants us to give birth to. And even so, glory to God, we don't want to go back to the old. We ought to be reaching for the fresh, reaching for the new, 
reaching for something that got weight and substance and carrying the glory of God. Listen at it in the CEB, the Contemporary English Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So then, if anyone is in Christ, we're in Christ, right? In the anointed one, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away and look, New things have arrived. Could raise somebody. New stuff is arriving. New stuff is coming your way. New house, new car, new money. God trying to do some new stuff in your life, but he can't do it if you're looking for the old rather than the new. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God. Hallelujah for what was, but what was has been. Now God is saying, get a hold of the new because I made you new in your spirit so you can grab a hold of a new attitude, a new mindset. Oh, I'm getting way ahead of all myself. Oh, let me go. Second Corinthians 5, 17 in Young's literary translation. Young's literary translation says, so that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things did pass away. Lo, behold, new have the all things. What? New have the all things. So if you're going to look at yourself as an old person, you won't get the all things that belongs to the new person. But if you don't see yourself the way you used to be looked upon by others. See, people got to understand that even though you don't look the, uh, look the same maybe outwardly you, if you had a bald head before you got saved you got one now amen but they got to understand that new has come on the inside ah uh, whoo and because you're new this new is entitled to all things being new hallelujah all right let's go to Matthew 9 verses 16 through 17 it says no man put a piece of new cloth Unto an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up, take it from the garment and the rent is made worse. Worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. So here we see Jesus is talking about this newness. He's talking about this new that is going forth. Because Jesus came to bring us into a new day. Glory to God. Jesus came so that the new creation would walk in a new day that he has appointed for us. A day of victory. A day of power. Don't act like you're weak. Don't act like you ain't got nothing. Don't act like you are just the scum of the earth. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. You are a new creation in the anointed one. You sit in heavenly places with Christ far above all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. How you are saint of the most high. You are child of the king. And this new you is ready for new things to appear. Hallelujah. Let's go to Galatians 5, 24 through 26 in the ICB translation. Galatians 5, 24 through 26 in the ICB translation said those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their own sinful selves. They have given up the old selfish, selfish feelings and the evil things they wanted to do. We get our new life from the spirit. So we should follow the spirit. We must not be proud. We must not make trouble with each other and we must not be jealous of each other. See, jealousy, envy, hatred, starting debates, all that stuff come with the old you. But the old you is gone, dead and buried. And a new you is on the scene now. And God wants you to be this new you in this new day in which he has declared. Hallelujah. Because this is a new day. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. God allowed through Jesus the middle wall of partition to be broken down that existed between Jew and Gentile. And he created one new man for this new day. 
And now, glory to God, it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, Hispanic or what. You are a new creature. That's all that matters now. If you be born again, born anew, born from above to experience the newness that God has. Now, I'm going to give you seven things that relates to this new you for your new day. Somebody say seven. Y'all know seven. That's God's perfect number. Ha <laughs> ha. Woo. Yes, Lord. We're going to deal with seven things because we want you to experience this new day. Number one, I won't be able to get all seven tonight. I just better deal with one of them. The first one, which is the main one, is a new spirit for my new day. See, when the Bible says that all things are new, he's not talking about outwardly. He's talking about inwardly. God made you brand new. He gave you a new spirit, a new heart, a new inner self, a new inward man. See, the outward man is perishing, going back to the dust. But the inner man, the new you, the new self, hallelujah, is being renewed day by day. Listen at 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 in the EASY translation. It says, when anyone belongs to Christ, they become a new person. Their old way of life has gone. Their new life has begun. So a newness has taken place on the inside. You are new. Don't let nobody think you are the same old person. Come to you bringing you wine and beer again. Tell them, say, no, 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 no. That was for the old person. It ain't for the new person. That belongs to the old me. The new me has a taste for water. Yeah, the new me likes some water now. The new me like Kool-Aid. The new me wants some tea. The new me don't drink beer. The new me don't drink wine because I'm new inwardly. You think I'm the same person because I don't look differently outwardly, but I'm a brand new person. And there's a new me for my new day because God got some new stuff in store for me. Some new relationships, some new associations, some new blessings are coming my way. Come on, type that in. Say some new blessings are coming my way. Some new blessings are coming my way. Some new blessings are coming my way. Because new things belong to new people. Let me say it again. New things belong to new people. Not old things belonging to the old person. Yeah, old things belong to the old person, but new things belong to new people. Old things don't belong to new people. Let me say old things don't belong to new people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Let me go to Romans 6 and 4. Romans 6 and 4. Uh, here we go. This is where the, the newness of life ministry was birthed from. And I'll stop with this. I won't be able to deal with no more. I got many, many scriptures to prove to you that, amen, a new spirit, hallelujah, is for this new day. Look at Romans 6 and 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Newness of life. This is where our church name was birthed from this scripture right here. Newness of life. Not old life. A new life. A brand new life. Because a brand new life belongs to us starting from the inside out. We are new inwardly. Therefore, a newness has begun. Hallelujah. And it ain't stopping. It's still going on. New things. Hallelujah. God wants to do new things. New things in us. New things for us. Because we should be expecting the fresh, the new. That revives us. That's why we stay so revived. That's why we stay on fire. Because God is always up to something new and fresh for his new man. He's always up to something new and fresh for his new woman. He's always up to something new and fresh and profound and prolific for that man that he's chosen to be his. For that woman that he's chosen to be his. God wants to do something new and fresh in you. Let him do it. Let it begin. Let the new come forth. The old is gone. Expect the new. Oh, I'm out of time. I got to quit. 30 minutes only for this <laughs> 
Thursday night and my 30 minutes is up. Thank you for watching tonight. We appreciate you. I can't wait to give you these other six things and we're just on number one and I got many more scriptures to give to you on point number one. You are new inwardly. Ezekiel talks about this new heart. We got a brand new spirit. Hallelujah. That's why you don't cuss no more. That's why you don't act a fool like you used to. That's why your desire is no longer for the club, but to lift your hands up in the house of God because you are brand new. And the moment the devil can make you think that you are old, then he'll bring old stuff back. But if you keep reminding that devil, I'm brand new. I'm in Christ. I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new woman. The new belongs to me. The new is mine. And I'm forgetting that that is old. And I'm reaching for the new. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you for watching tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Shout out to uh, Pastor Samuel Arrington, a brand new man. Expect brand new things. Pastor Arrington, a great man of God who pastors a great church in Rocky Mount. Amen. And we thank God for that great man of God. He and his lovely wife, Scripture Center. Yes, that's my man. Amen. Love you, sir. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Him and his lovely wife, Valerie, are some of the greatest jewels you'll ever want to meet in the kingdom. They walk as new men and as a new man and a new woman. Amen. And always talking victory. And I thank God for that man of God. All of you that are watching tonight, thank you for watching tonight. Listen, I won't be able to call all of your names out tonight because I got to go. But listen here. If this ministry is being a blessing to you, here's what you need to do to be a blessing to it. Amen. There are several ways you can give to our ministry of the local church. Amen. And here's one way is type out a letter and send a check or a money order to NOLCC or Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box uh, 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Again, Amen. N-O-L-C-C or Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. You can write that check out to N-O-L-C-C and we'll use it for the glory of God. We're on several TV stations. Amen. And some new stuff is coming forth <laughs> because God is always up to the new and the fresh. Hallelujah. So your walk with him don't get boring. Your walk with him don't get stale. Your walk with him stays fresh because you understand you are looking for the new. Amen. But also you can go to your Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, Vanco mobile app and uh, uh, download that Vanco mobile app, app and type in uh, Newness of Life Christian Center. You'll see something like this pop up where you can sow a seed to bless the kingdom of God. And we appreciate all of you who are watching on Facebook and YouTube who sow into our ministry. Thank you so much. We're using it for the glory of God. But if you would like to be a blessing to my wife and I and say, Pastor Sharp, Bishop Sharp, we appreciate you for giving us rich word each and every time you come on here. Here's what you need to do. You can uh, go to your cash app and type in that dollar sign R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. The dollar sign, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E, and sow a seed of any size to us, and we would appreciate it. And we know that my God, our God, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory because you are being a blessing to us. We don't speak and ask you to give to us because we want or need anything. All of our needs are met. My wife and I, we live a debt free life. We pastor a church that's debt free and we believe in living a debt free lifestyle. And so it's a blessing to you when you be a blessing to us. God wants you to be debt free. That's right. That's part of the new for you. You are new. God brought them out with silver and in and, and gold, and there was not a feeble one among them. Now, that was the blood of an animal that did that. How much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ set us free from debt, set us free from bondage, set us free from anything the devil trying to keep us tied up? I pronounce and prophesy over you that you are a new person and debt freedom belongs to the new person in the anointed one 
in the anointing because the anointing destroys the yoke. And I'm telling you, nothing has yoked up people's lives like financial bondage. And God wants you free in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you got to use some of these budgeting strategies that Pastor Reese taught you about. Go over there and look at that great teaching. Pastor Reese did a tremendous teaching. Amen. Along with myself, we taught you about budgeting. Amen. Go look at it. It's on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Get these principles to apply to your life that we know work because they work for us. And God is no respecter of person. Hallelujah. Well, each and every Tuesday night Bible study again is right here each and every Tuesday night at 730. Every Thursday night sharp points at seven o'clock and each and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We are back at NOLCC. And God is, wow, he is moving. Amen. We give him glory. And in-person services, you can watch us on Facebook and YouTube. Some of you watch us from Africa, New Jersey, and all these big cities and states. Listen, you can watch us at 1030 right here each and every Sunday morning from our sanctuary at 1030. Amen. We're, we're in the sanctuary where you can hear a good teaching at 1030 on Facebook and 1030 on YouTube. Simultaneously, you can hear the word of God. Now, we're excited about men because, again, this Sunday, Father's Day, men, come on, men, get this book. I am my brother's keeper, empowering men to take their place. This little $10 book can be a blessing to you. It can help you. It's an awesome book. Amen. To teach you how to be aggressive as a man, to teach you how to rise up in your place. Amen. Because I'm telling you, the devil doesn't want men to be in their place. Because when men are not in their spiritual place like they're supposed to be, he can continue to make havoc of our streets and havoc of our world. But we, you need to get this to your teenagers. That's right. You got teenage boys, husbands. Get this book to them. I'm not just selling all our books are paid for. And we're not trying to just get a book to you. Just we want this information, this knowledge, this wisdom to get into your spirit. We love you too much to let you stay ignorant. God wants us to be harmless as doves, but be wise as serpents. All right. So call our office at 252-641-0098. 252-641-0098 and get you a copy of the book. Leave your information. We got 13 powerful books. We're not going to talk about all of them tonight, but they will be a blessing to you. We appreciate you for watching. Get this one. Amen. Out to me. And somebody said, I already got it. I, we met a person the other day. He said, I got this book. I was reading it past y'all and somebody got my book and they didn't give it back. Well, guess what he did? He got another one. <laughs> So you don't let the devil win. Amen. He just got him another one yesterday and his wife got the book, uh, 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 Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. Amen. And uh, 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 well, sorry, we met a district elder yesterday and his wife from New Jersey. His wife got this book right here, Women of Substance, Taking New Steps. And he got this one right here. I am my brother's keeper. So they on fire right now to be a blessing. All right. And if you know somebody. A man who lost a loved one and they all distraught thinking who did it? Was it God? Was it the devil? Get this little mini book. It's only five little dollars called death. A need to understand. Get it for them so they can get a revelation of death and what a man God wants to do in their life. Because we speak about God's goodness. It is a tremendous book and we want to get it out to you. And long distance run. I'm going to talk about that a little bit because you want to go the distance running to receive the prize. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Pastor Samuel, you got everything. You got to get our latest three books. Let the prophet speak. Show us our way. Long distance runner and deaf a need to understand. All right. Thank you for watching tonight. I know you got to get ready to go see the Warriors play tonight. The Warriors playing the Celtics. And I'm hoping that tonight Steph Curry finish them off and that'll be the end of them. If not, they'll get another chance to do it the next time. But I'm hoping tonight that Clay and the Warriors finish it off tonight and get that fourth championship for Steph Curry, my man. Amen. Well, we thank you for watching tonight. Amen. On behalf of Newness of Life Christian Center, amen. This is Bishop Van Sharp and Pastor Reese signing off tonight, letting you know, amen, that you are a new person. So walk in this new day as the new you, a new me for my new day. God bless you.